After being towed off of two out of the last three trails that we were on, we had to get some help from some friends to solve the electrical problem that kept blowing fuel pump fuses. Once it was identified, it really was an easy repair. We were anxious, but a little bit nervous to get our Hummer back out on the trail. So we picked a very easy trail that would land us at an amazing mountain lake. As we pulled up, the sun was setting behind the surrounding mountains and we had just enough daylight to get set up. So we made it to Mountain Home Reservoir. This is in Southern Colorado, uh, near Fort Garland, not too far south of here is New Mexico. And we're right here on this reservoir, man. We are like, the bumper is like six feet away from the water. I'm gonna, we're gonna sleep right here tonight. So I'm gonna drop this rock <laughs> just in case something happens. We don't wanna be that guy rolling into the reservoir while we're sleeping up on the tent dragging our daughter in the annex in a big old soggy wet bag <laughs> out into the lake. So the reason we've come down to southern Colorado is there's a massive front hitting the central part of the state and it's going to be a lot of snow three to six inches kind of on the front range maybe a little bit more depending on how long it stays and the temperatures are going to be single digits. We weren't camping single digits tonight we're just not ready to do really hardcore winter camping when it's still fall right now. So we're gonna get set up. It's getting dark, it's getting really windy. I'm gonna throw on a little jacket, but it's really nice. I'm gonna tell you a story about what transpired weather-wise to get us right here. Pretty cool story, but hold on, let us get it set up first. On our way to the reservoir, we traveled on State Road 160 over Mount Mestis, where the early winter storm was in full effect at 21 degrees. At only 12 miles from the lake, we were concerned that the temperature was going to be much colder than we were expecting. At about six miles out, the road took a hard turn south and we were met with a very distinct wind out of the west. A quarter mile later, the temperature went from 21 degrees to a beautiful 65. We've never seen such a rapid temperature swing like that before. All right, so we are all three piled up in the rooftop tent. Bailey was down in the annex. The wind is something fierce and we're right here on this lake and it's coming right across the lake kind of from the valley which is I think it's a, kind of the west side of it it's just a front coming in from the west kind of northwest I believe and it's too loud down there in the annex for Bailey to sleep so she's up here with us and uh, here Natalie Bailey we're packing in like sardines so the gusts have been really bad. Let me see if I can kind of show you what's happening down in the annex there. So that's looking down in to the annex. This is the normal wind. When the gusts hit, it gets way, way worse. trying to sleep right down there but honestly we're shaking around up in here so much all right so I don't know if we're gonna get much sleep tonight the temperature isn't really that bad I think we're supposed to get into the low 30s tonight um, but it's the wind the wind is fierce and we don't have any reception where we can get any information as far as how how long this wind is gonna blow for so we're just gonna hunker down here and hopefully within an hour or so it dies down a bit but this whole thing is shaking the whole Hummer and rooftop tent are shaking and Natalie's freezing. I don't know why, Bailey and I are warm, but Natalie's freezing and she's shaking. I feel like I've had like three or four espressos and I'm trying to sleep. Natalie's shaking so bad. It's just this constant So uh, between the wind and Natalie, I don't think we're sleeping tonight, but we'll see. 
Hopefully we'll see you guys in the morning. Hopefully our rooftop tent will be intact. This is, I'm gonna say, this is the worst wind we've been in. And we've been in a really bad wind before, but I think this is pretty much maxing us out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going, we're gonna, we're gonna try to turn the lights off. <laughs> well, the wind never let up, but the sunrise over the lake was simply amazing. So, we're in uncharted territory right now. The wind is so strong, we have maxed out the cooking ability of our Timbo Tusk Scottle. This is the first time ever. We've used this thing in pretty high wind. And it's got the wind protector on it and all of that stuff, but we're hardly able to keep this thing warm. We got the gas turned up all the way, the flame is turned up. We're making the best of it, but it is really, really windy. But you can see how gorgeous this place is. If we could just get rid of the wind, man, we would stay here for, we'd want to stay here for a long time. It is really, truly gorgeous. So here's our dilemma. Behind the Hummer, the wind is blowing from the back side of where we're at now, from the passenger side. We're on driver's side. So the wind's coming by. So here we're fairly protected from the wind, but it's creating a vortex around the front and rear and kind of under the Hummer too. And we're just getting the sand circulating, blowing all over. So we got a choice with breakfast. We can cook it out there away from the vortex of sand and our fruit will never cook, or we can cook it here with the addition of some sand. We're gonna have to do it here. Because if not, we're gonna run out of propane. We're not gonna have our steak or our eggs cooked. Not complaining, but this is definitely a challenge. Good. Gonna hold that lid down, baby? So thankfully, we bought this lid for the Timbo Tuscato from Jerry over at the Rocky Mountain Overland Rally, and Without that, I don't think we'd be cooking anything today. So, thankfully we picked that up from him a year or two ago. So we'll keep on going. Every campsite comes with its own unique beauty and sometimes its own set of challenges. This site definitely had both. We got to camp on a beautiful lake shore and our faith in our Hummer was restored. We are ready now to head to some trails that will challenge our H3 a bit more. We can't wait. You saw us break down and get towed off the trail in Moab, ending our Utah overnight trip. We have some unfinished business out there. 